Oh, oh, hello there. I didn't see you coming. I'm working on an update video. Uh, I've been working on a game engine for a very long time. Darn. Six years and two months. Um, there is a lot to talk about, but for a starter, let me explain how my system works. After all, not all game engines work the same. My game engine, Game Lover I call it, defines systems like data managing for save and load, wacky script system, non-working cross-platform, and all of these that you can see scrolling. I can keep talking about it for hours. I will make another video talking about the game engine history, where it all started, the different versions and the stuff. But in this video, I will focus on the game file creation system. The game engine alone cannot make a game. It only defines how things works. The game project, on the other hand, puts things to work. By dealing with three type of files. The game file, which I call GF. Campaign files. And map files. The game project uses these files to run the game. But it doesn't create them. The map simulator create and edit them. So in the last 9 months, I have been working on the game engine in an attempt to make a major cleanup to the foundation. In the engine video, I will bore you to death about all these details and changes, but in this video we will focus on one part, remodeling the game file creation in the map simulator. Time to remodel this page! This page is damn crumbed to the roof. And what the hell? A lot of stuff in here. Holy potato. Look at this. I mean, look at what, what the hell was that? What the crap, right? Why do you keep a code that's not complete? Look at this. Look at this. How many tabs inside tabs? One, two, more places. Three, four. Why didn't you add more? I mean, there's always space for more. That's it. Cancel all of this. Screw all of that. Let's start over. <sighs> the old map simulator was a lost cause, that's why I started over. In the last 9 months and I was remaking part of the game engine, I really didn't want to add more remake work, but I'm afraid I have to. If I want a better and a cleaner systems, then it's better to get rid of the wicked. There are a lot of things I wanted to change in the map simulator. One thing that I wanted to change since day one is the game project folder. At first, the map simulator started only to create and edit maps. It wasn't designed to create the game file or the campaigns or even managing the assets. When I introduced the game file and kept add more and more things to the map simulator, things started to get out of hand. Now, in map simulator 3, it created a new folder for each project you make. That allowed me to save all their options, backups, and assets separated from other projects. Alright, now it's time to bore you to death. How about to show you one of the projects and how the game editor works, but instead we can even start a new project, so let's start a new one and make a live uh, presentation. So, uh, because we are too creative, we will call this project test 8. Do we have test 8? No? Okay. And the camp, we will call it uh, test 8 camp for the main campaign. Easy, right? So, when we create a new project, we can see it here. Ta da! So, uh, it should edit it, but uh, where did the page go? And there we go. So if we compare the old uh, map simulator, uh, everything is crammed in one page and everything is there. 
in one page but in here I um, broke them down I should change this one and call it viewer and uh, almost almost I done all of them uh, the attack and fire I'm going to implement a new attack and fire system later on when I have the map capable to draw the objects and the tills and everything and I can deal with the um, the layers for the map for the uh, for, for the animations and objects then I will start working on the attack and fire so this page is empty because of that I was going to make the attack but I stopped in the middle I was like stop stop I might change everything so yeah so the first thing we can do is to um, edit the general information the game version the avatar image version this is for the profile the player profile uh, they are universal and uh, this version was coded as a hard code in the game engine but i decided to make uh, the game file have the info which um, this game which version does it support uh, just to make it uh, simpler when i have the ability to make the user add assets as a xmp files i might consider to make the user use his own avatar but in that time it won't have values uh, avatars are connected to achievements so mm, yeah here you have on default I add the English and Arabic language but we can add more if we have more on the team who can talk these languages like Russian or, or Spanish or whatever um, let's add a language called alien And that's it. The game update the dialogue system automatically to support three languages now. I don't need to uh, do anything else. Um, the name key and description key, we will talk about them later. And the ma main camp, after I finish everything, I can add more camps from uh, the, the cam editor in here. But uh, for now, the game come with one camp at least and uh, the script i call script stack for a long reason so this is the default script for the game file the next page is the assets page here we can add the images so for example i can add till images and there are two ways either i can click on add and it will open to me um, the file browser I can take them from older projects or I can drag the image if I can find it or drag images and put them here if I uh, want to add one more than one then I can drag more than one of course uh, to show them we have the viewer for that we will see this in detail soon but for now let's enlarge it and whenever you click on something it show you the image it can you can scroll you can zoom with the keyboard or zoom from here very beautiful very very beautiful and we have options as well so let's add assets for everything uh, we can have animation for the tills is the system I use since day one uh, objects like this items like this uh, bullets I don't have a good image for bullets but let's use this a creature we have only one backgrounds hmm. we can add this or this this I stole it from the internet I should give you the credit but I don't know who made it and this made by my brother actually ice lord um what next uh, weapons I have only one which I made 
Did I throw it or did the um, Artem throw it? I believe Artem threw it and I just colored the rest. Made several uh, versions. Accessory. Accessory are, um, in short, equipments. I will put the creature walker in it because we need to add the hands as accessory soon. The GUI for GUI. We can add buttons, menus. Um, I made these as well. I have fancy ones, but they are huge and I cannot deal with them. So, um, I, I got myself uh, an artist who was graduating and she made a lot of beautiful GUI, but unfortunately the smaller button she made is this large. And I have all her work, but uh, I cannot deal with the work she made, unfortunately. Uh, it is so soon. But she, she made the... Um, she made the menu for the game that I'm working at. William Ordeal. Or William's Ordeal. So all of these are giant, uh, giant, they, they just, in the size of titans, I, I cannot deal with them. So uh, when I get the resize version, hopefully, I will be able to deal with them because I need all of them in one page and we will see soon. And last thing is the portrait. Portrait is used in my, um, in my, uh, conversation system and the event system for the conversation system so uh, as I told you we can scroll up and down and this is for the avatar so here we can add delete and whatever music so we can add these I thought I put them in the wrong um, section. Oh, can't I? Don't I have any sound to add? Come on, content. Should I leave the sound on? Yeah. Well, we have actually a file in the old map simulator. Uh, pin, debug, images, not the images, music, where is the audio, audio, ah, here, unfortunately I didn't make my uh, editor play the sounds, maybe later on I'll make it play the sounds to test them, animated blocks, so what the hell is this? This, my friend, is a system I made. Why it doesn't show? First bug. We have the first bug. Uh, save and exit. Edit. Oh yeah, it was a bug. It, 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 when I add an image for the animation, it didn't add the... Uh, the one in here in the list. So what the hell is this? This is a system I made so we can um, make the normal tail act as an animation. So if I want to make this one 35 work as a C animation, we can give it four frame and we add it. Here the system will remember whenever you use the map this one it will make it animated like this and inside the editor there's um, there is a three digits that you can use to tell um, the game the delay for the, the animation how many frames should it delay it so you can connect it as one big wave with more than one tail Unfortunately, the guy that's responsible on drawing things on the map are not finished yet. I'm going to do work on it after 
this video actually after making this video so uh, the, yeah as you can see easily I can tell it hey make this 58 work as uh, an ocean and I can save it or I can click on it to load the all the result and I believe it didn't yeah that's another mistake it didn't um, <laughs> refresh the image for uh, see when I click on 98 and I click load it changed the base value but it didn't refresh the images for the 35 so we cut two mistakes that I didn't notice next is the faction system the faction system is made for two reasons to flag the entities in the game which side do they belong to do they belong to the Klingons? do they belong to the Federation do they belong to the Romulan Romulan it depends on your game how many factions do you want so we can make a good nature and evil and here we can tell we, which faction is allies to the other faction and which one is the enemy and which one can they hit the fire collision the second main goal for the fiction for, for the factions uh, system is to organize and create reference dictionaries for the entities on fires to cross check which bullet can hit which enemy optimization to make it uh, to make only the ones that the fire can hit to check the position with it doesn't check the position with everything so we can make nature can damage no one and allies to no one the good is allies with good and nature evil is enemy of evil and good and allies with evil and can hit, hit both so the standard fire detection or the default fire detection in the game is uh, c configured in here but there are ways I might delete later on you can override the system there are ways to override it by using dynamic functions I might delete to make the game engine as simple as possible because I notice adding to too many features is not not a good idea all the time the next feature is the GUI name it's something that I made to make my life easier before whenever I want to add a button or add a menu I hard coded the position the position and the size every time and every time I want to make button to or this button I just go there and tell it hey make a create a button that's the image using this image and then give him the rectangle so I made a system that can uh, make this for me so you can see here the numbers if we want the menu we can say 31747 317 475 so you can here we can call it menu one and that's it so this is the full GUI image and when I click on menu one it tell you this is the menu one if you can see I might screwed up the um, the bottom and I made it a little bit too large so or too, f too wide so actually I can fix that and save another way is using the draw button everywhere you can uh, make this is a feature that I used a little bit in the old engine but when I recreate these pages or recreate the post system I made it available everywhere another way is to just click on the draw button and draw a rectangle and that's it it gives you the rectangle then you can adjust it to uh, fit and there you go it seems it's a little bit smaller so uh, no not this uh, yeah. all right button one 
So this system, the GUI name, is a way to memorize the location of the menus. I need to add all of these guys in here so I can use them easily. I still can use the old system, but this is much better to use only the name and from the name it can it create different buttons and different menus and everything and the X button. Next is the groups. Whenever you have a game engine or a game, you have I and I files, you can um, edit and adjust some of the setting. In here, I made them all available in a few pages. Before it was in three pages in the old uh, map simulator, and here we have one page. Uh, for example, the item groups. The item groups, the game engine uh, support massively two type, passive and active. Passive mean the item you need to pass the item, touch it to take it. And active is you need to do something to take it. Uh, you can add more groups and make them behave in a different way. Unfortunately, items cannot be shot. You cannot shoot items to destroy them as items. But there are tricks. You can make an object behave as an item and you can hit objects and it can hit back and can explode and whatever so uh, even though item alone as an item cannot be uh, cannot have collisions or affected by graffiti or all of that kind of crap objects are made to do that so objects we have another group is to define how can the player interact with object the best way to describe that is imagine if you're going to make an adventure game or a quest game. We used to call it quest games because of King Quest, but actually they call it adventure games or inventory management adventure games. There are a lot of weird way names for these games in the 80s. So objects, you can look at them to interact with them, to tell you what the hell is it. Or you can use them, or you can search them, or you can loot them, or you can step on them, or you can throw them, or you can pick them up, or you can take them, or you can edit them. You see, depends on the game, you can change how many ways you want to interact with objects. You can um, uh, touch them, if you touch them like if you touch the item, you can hit them, maybe a fire hit them, maybe an explosion. So, a trigger is a trigger you, you you need an interact to make a trigger and the trigger will fire the script so we can here use we add use look back kick and so on and so forth so, uh, conversation system um, yeah the mess and when I start working on William RDO, the main goal was actually to make a conversation system. I want to make serious games. I don't want to make a game with a character that's planned and he doesn't have a background, he doesn't have a goal, you don't connect with them. No, I wanted the game have meaningful characters, characters that, that you connect with. So one of the things that I really want to do is to make different types of conversation systems. Unfortunately, uh, the conversation system I made was made on the game project side. After I finish the uh, map uh, layer drawing on the map and then finish the drawing in the game engine, I will need to recreate a general conversation system because now I have just a hard-coded, a huge hard-coded piece of code to work as a conversation. Anyway, each game can support different types of conversation systems. So we can say conversation type 1. And it, each conversation system can have a different maximum number of dialogue shape. For example, you can uh, have a thinking dialogue where the character is thinking or a normal dialogue or an angry dialogue with the spikes this is the newer GUI mm, I suppose have a, a new one for the angry but I didn't bust it in here 
So we can say we have three different types of, uh, of um, dialogue style and it can support up to six talkers. So you can have and define different type of conversation. So every time a conversation happen, uh, the game file or the campaign actually, the campaign is the one who is responsible on, on the conversations, will tell the game, hey, use type one or use type two and so on and so forth. Control profiles. I made a controller system here and we will show it later after we pass all these guys. Uh, each game can support different number of um, players and a different number of profiles. Whenever you play a fighting games or some games they have already presetted control profiles. You can say for example uh, type A and type B. So one of them use WASD and one of them use the arrow keys for example. So you can define profiles on in the game itself the player can define his own profiles to remap his own control and we will see all of that later but in here we can define the types already in here that the, the game aware of and we can make the default one for the players and how many players we have here we can declare the names of menus that can be controlled by keyboard and joysticks for example the main menu and it can be controlled only by the player one but uh, player um, two menu or for example the player like the arcade game you have some sitting for each players where they can buy and upgrade stuff so player one I know the controller zero but let's call it uh, player one menu and we can make underscores uh, I prefer not to put spaces because that will screw up if I want to do scripts it's better to have no spaces in here but the player 2 menu only player 2 can control and player 3 only player 3 control and the pause menu for example all of them can control why a game have three players which kind of games have only three players let's make it four so here you can see the main menu only the first player and the player menu one and two and three but the post menu all of them use it except the fourth player because he came too late we can fix that and make it save but i did it as fourth player because i'm too lazy and let's go to the next page before whenever i have attributes like hp and sp and mp and whatever they i used to have a text box where you can create whatever and when you do the script it's create whatever but later on i start to make systems to help me to uh, to build the, the, the scripts and everything so i prefer to have a fixed list of attributes like hp strength attack whatever and you can all of them in here and this is only have the name of them the configuration in, in here but this one actually i believe when you go here you can see um, no i deleted i guess i used to have the same page in here so you can add the the, the ones that you deal with in there uh, accessory types are um, how to put it accessory types are the equipments that show on the sprite what kind of equipments can show on the sprite for example right hand left hand armor range weapon um, melee weapon even heads if your game support heads like a lot of games nowadays um, so on so forth and here the frames 
which is um, a way to tell the animation in a quick and dirty way which kind of frame is it so if you have uh, different armors and the, the damage can show off the, show on them you can put the states for the armor which state of the armor you have for each one of these lists and um, or the position of the hand so better not to come well it's up to you to complicate the names of the states or make them as simple as possible yeah creating the animation with layers is a lot of freaking work it might be more, more work than uh, making the page itself the last page <sighs> Yeah, I need to take a break from all of this. A lot of talk, I know. Uh, the last page is for the portraits, for the talkers. I have a system, if I want to make a game like um, uh, Game Maker, where the portraits are fixed. You have idle, smile, and whatever. And all the portraits have the same um, configuration, same size, same location. I can use this page so to create a talker we need to use the same name for its own main image unless it's exceptional which is a different story we will talk about that later so we have uh, Nolan Pushnell for example in here and this is a good time to show you um, another feature which is the grid um, here we can configure the um, the viewer to show us a grid so I just already filled the numbers in here for the size for the body itself and we can add spacing as well because whenever I um, use a grid I don't use one line in between I put one pixel in between uh, so I add a space of one and I shifted by one as well to the left so it doesn't use the first pixel as the start of the grid and um, a different feature as well I can set the color for it I call it shift whenever I hold shift it highlight the area for the uh, for the grid itself so instead of drawing the area every time, I can use this. Uh, so we can make it uh, look blue, for example, and make it transparent. I can make it opaque or whatever you call it. But you want to see the image behind, don't you? So let's make it transparent a little bit. I prefer green. And all of this saved automatically. So let me show you live. I can save here. I can close. I can save and exit. I can close the whole thing. And based on the project, each project have its own configuration. So if I click on right, it memorizes that the page is open, memorize the, the colors and everything. So we made Nolan Pushnell. Now we need to add his body sides. For example, I can right read and I can click on this one or shift and it automatically add the numbers let's make another one and we call it phone so here I can click on read phone and it show you the result let's add another one open add close add an idle add so we can here click to check the results and there you go last thing I would like to show is the avatars uh, the avatar is a system I already add this one we can add images from the portraits and um, you can select them and we can select the size and everything to decide which avatar 
I forgot before we go before I forget we can add exceptional talker uh, avatars if we want to add um, an exceptional talker where um, not a lot of uh, it doesn't have a lot of animations and stands and sides only one image for the whole game like Carlin um, Ted Dabney wife let's add her uh, unfortunately it's an exceptional talker so we cannot see the image in here uh, I might adjust the system to make it show but we can um, see the image from the main assets we go to portraits we go to act one and that's her and here you can see all the characters that we have only one image for them um, unfortunately they are not the same side I didn't notice that great so I need to um, not use the grid for these two characters I need to have to, to give them different side which is not a big problem but I need to be careful so we can add her here we call Colin side and we add zero zero because here, here she's in the position zero 350 and 1000 and here we select her from here and now we have Nolan which have different sides but when I use the conversation system and tell it I want Colin you will immediately choose Colin side and use this image instead of using the image of the character name it's uh it's a little bit whacked i might change that but so far this is how it works if i figure out to make uh, a way to make it uh, easier to make exceptional i will do it because th the system has gone through a lot of changes by the way i've been i worked on the conversation system around two years with the cutscenes and effects and everything so there's a lot of things that has been changed. Another, the last thing that we can talk about in the main group and assets and GUIs and talkers, this page, I'm talking about this page, the, the avatar system, the conversation avatar system. I can use any image of the portraits to make avatars. So we can add them in here, then we can select them in here and we can see the result. So if you know, know the size, I believe 180 by 180, we can add them like um, 0, 180, 180. And this is Will. Oh, William, the full name. And the next one is Tamar, I believe, 180. And oh yeah, 360. We could as well use the grid and everything. So if I click on the click and click the grid, it will select the grid of the uh, previous configuration. So we can change the configuration and say 180. I said 180. The one is doesn't want to work. Oh, 180. Oh, come on. Uh, I don't know what am I doing and we can select her so uh, here the same it didn't work maybe it didn't yeah it's the same values but it didn't refresh the image silly me now it refreshed what the hell anyway this is the avatar system so you can select the avatars And we're done with this page. Next is the art classes. So where to start? Before I can start uh, showing you the page, I need to explain some of the things like the art class. The engine itself define the rules and blueprints, which from them we can define the entities that live in the game. I will explain what does the blueprint mean later on, but now, I made these three blueprints, creatures, weapons, and objects 
as a subclasses to one class only, which I deal with the most, and I called it R class. And I made animation into three separate subclasses as well to uh, cross behavior with the R classes and others. To create an R class, we first need to select the type, one of the three. And here, we can assign the image for the class. So let's create a creature, for example. And let's remove the grid because it's start to bother me. So this is Walker, uh, the first game that I tried to make for real. Unfortunately, many issues happens, including finish problems and the artist didn't want to work, even though I paid him the most. And the only good thing happens is I have a full sprite for Walker at least. So to define an R class, we need to define several things, including the name. Uh, the name key and descriptions, we can talk about them later, but they are uh, keys for dialogues uh, to uh, show its name in the game in different languages and to show its description if, uh, if he has any. Factions, we already made three factions, if you remember, we can make him good. Accessory types, we define accessory types, but we didn't define him, him himself as a, an accessory type. I cannot make something equip walker yet, but I can define him as a soldier or as a walker and we can make him ride a tank or ride a bicycle or uh, a monster like a boss if he uh, can uh, capture walker and hang him from his leg or something. So if we have surprise for this, we can define him as an accessory. And whenever we need him to be uh, included as a layer in another animation, like riding a tank on the top, we can define a type for him. And the job is the class system, which is um, the RPG gamey things, like give him skills and attributes. We will talk about that later. We didn't define any, so we don't have it here. Here, Walker, as you can see, only have the right side. But actually, we can mirror all these animation to the left side, so we need to define two sides for him. And uh, even though we don't see the reflection in here, later on in the option, I will add an option here to see the uh, reflection, horizontal and uh, vertical. But we can define if I want to print Walker without uh, an animation. How do we see him? We can select this frame. Again, I can use the grid or I can use numbers. So the side is 64 by 64 and uh, we want the second one. So we want this is the uh, first side and the second side is the same. And later on in the control system, we can tell him whenever he is side one, the image is reflected uh, to the left. If you have a game that have a sprite that look differently on the left, like if he's missing an eye or missing uh, a hand or uh, wearing a cape and it has a different animation for the left, we can tell him that the different side on the left look differently and we select a different side for that. So we can add him and there we go, we have Walker. Another thing that the R class deal with are the collision types and the script, of course, but the scripts, we will talk about scripts in another year, in another video. Uh, the collision types is decide what the collision type, you know, collision, is we have three types of collision. The first one is collision with walls and uh, we can make a ghost character that doesn't collide with walls so we can remove this one and we can draw it easily like this and one of the things we have here we can change the color of the uh, the collisions for example we can make uh, the wall one red and uh, 
The second one is for detecting the bullets. Oh, I didn't click on it. So we can decide where the bullet can hit the character. And we can make it green. Maybe blue. Maybe cyan. And I should add an option to add thickness to the rectangle as well. And the third one is usually for the enemies is when you touch other characters uh, in this rectangle, it damaged them. And we can connect the damage to the uh, default class somehow or by the using the script. Actually, the easiest way to do it now is by doing the scripts. So we can make this one yellow. How to make yellow? I don't know how to make yellow, so yellow. So we can make uh, Walker actually damage the enemies if he touch them in here. Of course, you can do this with the uh, with the uh, with the size with the with with the zoom. I mean to make it easier. Or you can adjust the numbers uh, manually to, to to make it fit. And don't forget to save. And that's the R class. So we can use the same page for this. Let's uh, close the grip and close this. Zoom in, and we can go with the gun. And as you can see, it has uh, six um, types and four frames for each. And the size of the image is here, so we can calculate how much is wide and width. So it's 66 by 26. So we add six sides, and the first size is 66 by 26. And the second one is the same side. I thought I add a button in here to select the previous size, so we don't need to add them every time. It seems I, for I forgot to add this feature. Again, if uh, the weapon is breakable, we can add a collision to it. If the weapon is like a wing for the airplane that can collide with others, we can add the wall to it. Uh, theoretically, I haven't done this yet because I changed all the foundation for the R classes, as I said many times. But I didn't, I'm, I'm creating the page to create the data, for example. Uh, but I didn't finish this part. So when I start working on the advanced R classes entities, um, and I want to make these features work, hopefully, hopefully someday, we can see it in action. So uh, a lot of old games in the 90s, for example, Contra and a lot of shooter games, you have big bosses and they have weapon slots where you can break each weapon separately. So yeah, if I add a collision and a wall and a damage as well, you can add these values the, to, to, to the weapons. I didn't save, so if I click on the gun, it loaded. I must click save to save. Objects, let's add an object. So what do we have here? We have a sign, we have a bridge, we have a switch. Let's add a switch. So this is uh, 64 by 64. Is it? No, it's 48. And uh, we can have one switch. It has two forms and it's natural. We can make it good. And um, the first form is. Uh, hmm, funny. This doesn't work. Why? Maybe I must add it first. Yeah, I must add it first to make the position work. And the second form, oh wow, this is the first time I uh, test this feature in here. Because the, the way how I code the viewer, this guy, uh, it should work with all of them. 
but the condition to make the Swiss wa work is to have this one exist. Uh, again, the way how I uh, code the game before to use the, the interact trigger is checking the collision um, rectangle. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this, but maybe, maybe. So to make the switch work, we need to make a collision rectangle. And the second form can have a different rectangle. Uh, it's a hustle to, uh, to check the values between the two. Hey? I will add a feature later on, funny. I should thought about all these features before, but now they start to come to me. So I need to add another feature to, uh, to copy the previous um, side. Uh, collision rectangles and copy the values. It shouldn't be that hard. It can be buggy as hell, but it shouldn't be that hard. We can have a rock and it uh, has one side, 48, 48, and 48. We can have a teleporter, we can have trees. Uh, the trees can be tills, but they can be um, objects as well it's funny because i made this long time ago and i'm not sure if these are transparent or not oh the rock has two forms a broken one and normal one yeah this is my great art uh, capability so we can add bridge we can add whatever but i believe these are enough for the um the the stuff actually this is a long bridge i made it as a single object for testing Let's go to the animation. Before we jump and talk about animation, let's talk about equipment and accessories. Before in the old game engine, I actually have equipment slots, equipment and accessories and accessory objects and it was a freaking mess and half of the system didn't work as well so what are accessories accessories are now accessories and equipment i merged them both of them in one each r class can have different equipment so for example we can make walker have a right hand equipment slot which accept right hands except one right hand of course but um if i have different types of right hands except for example imagine if the game we have infection system and we have a different right hand an infected or a zombie right hand system or uh, i mean uh, image or accessory or equipment uh, so we can add a different accessory types that the right hand ex accept which is the zombie hand if walker can be infected or maybe a cyborg hand or maybe whatever or maybe all of them have the same type the right hand another one he need is the left hand and uh, left hand uh, let me uh, let me delete this page because I selected one before and the left hand have the left hand type and there you go so the right hand except the right hand the left hand except left hand what else do we have we have as well a range weapon oh actually we can make it the main weapon and a hotkey weapon it depends on how your game work so um, main weapon and uh, hot weapon one two three you can do whatever you want it depends on your game design maybe we have hot keys for uh, range weapons different than hot keys for the melee weapons like devil may cry 
So we can add the uh, what kind of things that it accept. So the range, the, the main weapon can accept range weapon and melee weapon and save. And we can make conditions in here as well. So each R class can have equipment slots. Objects, for example, we can make a tree and we can add equipment slots for branches. And then we create branches and uh, we can uh, fit them in. As I said, this is a blueprint. So this is the conditions and what can it do? For weapons, we can add um, a silencer or we can add the clip or the magazine if your uh, or mods if your game uh, system make the weapon support these things you can add them in here so all our classes and talkers have equipment slots accessories in the other hand can be an equipment or can be an accessory as i said an equipment is just a functional thing like um a gun or a breakable branch but accessory in itself it can be a sprite just part of the sprite like the hand it doesn't have um, functionality it, it just take it, one of the sprites that you add in the accessories and we uh, set the type in here and we just take the right hand so the right hand we have here we can define the accessory types you can define them in the group as you've seen before or you can define them in here and when you select them you can see what kinds of frames uh, they can have so let's define the right hand walker right hand and walker oh i did did i select the type jesus yeah, I did select that type. Left type, uh, left hand. And here we can add the forms. A quick way to add the form, you can select the form in here and double click on the form. And we can use uh, the center points if we go into tilt this layer and the location. So uh, this one is, pray it will work, is this one, add, please tell me it worked. Ta-da! I feel it's off a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Do you know why? Because this one is 64, not 48. So let's try again. Oh, I'm scrolling with the mouse. Last time I didn't did that, it crashed, and I'm not sure if I fixed the issue or not. Save. This seems um, worked better. It's still not that smooth as I much as much as I wanted, but we can add a second form. But it's much better than this, the the old thing. A third form, 128, uh, fourth form, 64 plus 128, how much, how uh, much, 192, so here we have the forms of the right hand, save, don't forget to save. So here, the right hand, it has these four forms. Uh, actually, we have more than four forms. We can uh, register it. There is, if you can select the right hand here. No, if you select the walker sprite. If you go down here, we have images for the melee attack, for example. So we can make a separate hand for the melee attack with the dagger. Or we can consider them different types of forms but let's go to the left hand so uh, walker left hand we have the left hand we can take the forms and rename them rename them or whatever 
Actually, for the right hand, I better add the fourth one in he the fourth one in here, and uh, better to add a fourth one in here as well. So for the left hand, F one. video and adding the branches and show you the real life uh, doing that but that was eh, too much work and save as I said the creatures and the R classes can be equipped the system support that and they can have a single type so if I go to um, to the R class and say uh, weapon the gun is a type of a range weapon save it oh whoops I didn't select the gun e. um, sorry about that range weapon save close and here I go to the weapon gun and it will tell me it's a range weapon I go to the range weapon I call it um, frame one um, weapon frame one. I I can change the name, can't I? Yep. And in here is sixty six. But there will be a problem. I need to add six frames for each weapon. But for now, let's add only one because I don't want to do all of them. Okay, okay, so it doesn't confuse. Save. So now if I select the gun, we will see it has the um, the uh, the frame. And we can add the um, center point as 22.17. I didn't function made a function to draw angles yet. And I didn't test the show. Does it show it's... Uh, uh, what do you go? The angle when you do the animation, but uh, l l let's take it one step at a time. The last section for this page is the toker. I made the toker support its own kind of accessory system to uh, optimize the images because accessories have their own image pool. But I want the tokers to have one image for the, the whole toker. For example, um, Nolan Pushnell have only um, one image, and it's saved in the portrait uh, folder. If I'm going to use the system and use the, the parts of the heads and the mouth as an accessory, I need to create another image that live in the sprites uh, folder with the same image. And it will consider two different textures and two different folders. And I was like, ah! I was like, you know what? Screw all of this. I want the um, the um, system have um, different heads. This, the token have its own uh, box in the same image. And to organize the conversation data as well, it will be much easier to deal with the same object. So here. Oh, I, oh, frick me. I thought I s fixed this problem. I added an empty name and it accepted it. It seems I fixed it in here, but I forgot to fix it in here. So let's add something called head to Nolan Pushnail and let's delete this one. And uh, by mistake, it saved the WF1 because it was selected. So heads in Nolan Pushnell are here. And I forgot the size for the head, darn it. But one trick to fix this issue, I believe is 69 or something. No, it's 150. Uh, give me a moment.
Alright, I got the numbers and I tried to show you a feature but um, it seems I fucked it up. It was working before I... It was working yesterday and two days ago before I was working on this video but whatever. The feature is we can enter the values of uh, the grid. So the size is one 60 by 178 but you can notice the grid for the head started after the body so we can shift it by 1000 here and uh, it should work but I screwed it up somehow and it's affected by the zoom and I tried to fix it for the last 20 minutes and I screwed it up even more and more so, um, but I believe the shift works, the shift works, it seems so. Anyhow, uh, it, it just screwed up, so I need to fix the calculation later on. I tried to fix it, then I screwed up something else, and I was like, you know what, I want to finish this video so I can start working on fixing this, these issues, and start working on a map um, drawing. And the map uh, editing as well. I need to change a lot of things to create new maps now. So we can add these faces or heads. So let's call the first one read. The second one think. So these are the states, yeah I need to make uh, when you make this one, uh, resize this, resize these as well somehow. So uh, let's add the first one, read. So read is um, a location at 1000, 160 and 178. So let's add it and we can see, let me remove the spark in the grid for the God's sake and this is read. To uh, get the second phase we just add 160 and this is think. So we can save the head, same we can do to the mouth, but I don't know the calculation for the mouth and uh, I need to add it as well, mouth. Well you want to um, prove that uh, it's um, easy to use a system, so prove it, show me the meaning, show me the the proof so we can add mouth name mouth as the accessory part for the talker and what the hell I I made a mistake by selecting the head so it copied all these so we can draw use the draw function at least uh, it was what I had in the first place. So I don't know the, uh, the size and everything, but we can guess. So, um, this is M1. M2, we can add 66 to it. Oops, it's not that uh, perfect. Uh, so I, I should know the uh, the size, and it's obviously it's not the uh, the, the correct size, but I should know the size. So I need to to uh, figure out the size. But for now, this is just for demonstration. And to be honest, the artist didn't put the size in the correct way, so I readjust the size as in 
move them away because the heads they are not um, not equal actually they are not equal so I size them up and change the order a little bit and the same for the mouth and I need to figure out a lot of things but for now uh, this is uh, the demonstration for the equipment slots we have Walker oh yeah we need to add to uh, Nolan he can add a head equipment EQ and it accept heads and uh, he need uh, mouth equipment which accept mouse and that's it so here after we talked about the R classes equipment and uh, assets let's um and accessories of course let's take a look on the animation so animations can have uh, three types and uh, they are three subclasses I mean they are the symbol animations like the items and bullets fires it's just an animation there is the layer animation where you can have multiple layers when the image is drawn depends on what the character is equipped like the talker the portrait for the conversation system and the R classes and there is the collision uh, animation where um, we can change each frame of the animation collision values in the dictionary if the change doesn't exist it uses the default value so let's take a look let's make the animations for walker for example here we have walker all the animations for him and uh, most of them doesn't require layers but we have one of them here where he doesn't have hands because we can add the hands to it to make it a layered and we can give it a weapon in the middle and this one for attacking doesn't have hands and this one when he's holding a weapon and jump so um, we have different animations we can create uh, the animation system the editor itself it need the first rectangle where the animation start and how many frames and this is how we make the animation um, if the frame uh, count went outside of the image on the right it jumped to the second line this calculation use modular so it takes a lot of calculation power uh, it takes some process so in the map simulator in the editor when I edit the data I do that but when the game files go to the game engine itself and the game created it generates an array of rectangles to remember to, to, to we so it can jump into the frame it's pre-calculated so it saves each rectangle where the position uh, the resource the location of the image that's printed on each frame so whenever the animation works like for example walk it's 16 frame it's 64 by 64 so here I can change the uh, the uh, the frame or oh, I must add the animation first excuse me here we can see whenever the frame moves it moves the animation here we can change each uh, frame how many ticks does it go in millisecond before it jump to the second one so you can change the numbers one by one or you can use this to change all of them into 64 or change all the ones on the left of the tracker or all the ones on the right of the tracker so um, and when you click play you will see the uh, 
the speed that you played so for example if I'm going to make the first one really fast oops and then really slow oh what's wrong with me uh, slow and we play it will play really slow at first because these are 20s and then it jumped to 100 for more testing you can make the play continuous so let's make it 64 all of them uh, the artist who made the drawing gave me the numbers I can open the old projects and uh, take the numbers out let me make all the animations first I will speed it up then we will talk about the collisions and layers and everything all right and we're back so now if I click on any of these guys like rolling kicking of course you need to change the value of the frame the speed of the frame death for example uh, we will get uh, better animation this is idle too. walking with hands and weapon getting hurt the idle animation for hurt attacking and jumping without hands so let's save the changes here just in case if something happened so to demonstrate some of the features all our classes considered as collision animation that's mean we can uh, play with the collision values for example when you roll you can avoid the walls and um, uh, bullets when you're rolling so we can do the second frame and the first frame the second frame uh, oh it reset because I changed how the draw function happened he <laughs> he so whenever you click draw it reset the uh, image location because it's supposed to be uh, because I made two draw functions and then I merged them and I screwed up but it shouldn't change the uh, frame I need another thing I need to fix another thing I fucked myself up when I uh, add more stuff so the default collision will be used in the first uh, two frame but the third frame it will start using this collision value the same with the uh, next values to be honest something is going on here it shouldn't dance between the frames uh, I, I need to fix up some of the stuff because every time these values is loaded it refresh and it reset the frames and it look weird but anyway with this you can again I will add a feature later on to use the same values to copy the values for between the frames you can adjust them for example you see that the frame is not exactly on the right position so again it shouldn't change the image so another error that we found while demonstrating great it was working by the way when I first implemented but when I start adding um, the draw function to draw the rectangles I screwed myself up but hopefully it's obvious what the heck is going on so we can make some of the animations have zero values to cancel the original default value for example maybe you have a skill that make you into a mist or ghost so you can um, go through doors or a skill that make you un in invincible so bullets will go through you uh, or if you want to catch the bullet but never damage you you will not change this you will change the attributes in that case so this is how you manipulate did I save I forgot to save 
Hehe, <laughs> I lost the values. I didn't hit save and I changed the values. Uh, silly me. Oh, I forgot to demonstrate the... Um, the uh, because this is the seventh take for the animation. If the number go higher than the uh, image, it will jump to the next uh, row. It calculated by using mod with the width of the image, but when the game file go to the to the engine, it generate an array of rectangles to memorize each animation, all its frame, where's the location of the drawing. So I don't use mod while the animation is played. Uh, accessing of the array is O of 1. It will take more memory space, but it will be much faster than recalculating the location of the first frame plus the current frame multiplied by the number of the size of the animation modded on the size of the image. It's much faster to just access the array and see where the rectangle location is. So if, for example, if we made an animation of 160 frame and made it all 32 and we play it, it will go through all the image and keep playing the frames because it's 160. So when it finished with walk, it go to the jump, the second row, then it go to the roll, then it go to the kick, and it will keep going. So yeah, this is how the uh, animation system work. But because I limited to 16, it only walk. The next part of the animation is the collision, and we already showed it. Uh, the fire point is connected to the attack system where the bullet goes out. It works in uh, game engine 3 and the map simulator 2. But I deleted the, f the attack and fire system and I didn't remake it yet. So this thing is not working. It's suspended till I finish that part. Here where things get confusing. It gets so confusing that the whole page you see here and all these systems took me one month to create and this page alone, this tab, the layer tab took me another month. It is that complicated. So to demonstrate the creature, let's use the ill walk animation or I mean this is the main we can add the uh, left hand before the um, and we can add the right hand and let's call it right whoops oh boy and we crashed and we have a range weapon let's call it weapon uh, by one pixel from the old animation and when we, um, why it doesn't move? This video will never finish. The frame should move, but it doesn't move for some reason. And I don't believe I made a gun. Did I make a gun? The right hand, now it moves. What the hell? The right hand, we can give it, uh, Walker right hand, but I don't see it, uh, and it crash again. Welcome from the future. Anyhow. A bug bugged me to death, so I went to crush it. And it took me aside to fixing few bugs there, and discover new bugs there, and add few features there, and two days passed. Oh well, so where were we? Where were we? Oh yes, the layered animation. So what about the layered animation? You see, in the game engine, we have a hierarchy of classes for animation. The super class is just a symbol animation. When the map asks the animation to draw, 
and the creature asks the or these objects ask the animation to go and if they are the symbols of a class animation they will just go it but when it is the the subclass that lay an animation like the ones that the creature have it will check first the layers uh, list and if it is empty it will just call the superclass uh, draw function which is uh, just drawing the animation but if we have a layer or more then it will consider it as a layered animation and it will do the calculation to draw all of them at once so how to turn a normal animation into a layered animation by adding a layer the main layer so let's pick the L walk and L stand for layer so L jump is a layered as well and L fire as well and now this is a layered animation unfortunately we won't we won't be able to see it till we add the layers and add the testing uh, objects so how to add layers let's add the hands for example to add the layer we need first to select an equipment slot to represent it so let's select the left hand and let's call it left and we can here add either at first or at last so now the left hand is before the main, so it's behind the main drawing. Let's add the right hand and let's call it right. And we will add it after the main. And we can add the main weapon as well. And you see here we have the, the hotkeys weapons. These doesn't show unless if we have uh, like uh, have the weapons on his back somehow, we can put them there. but we won't do it in here so the weapon that he's holding let's call it weapon we could call it main weapon or equip weapon or whatever and if we want to adjust the position we just select the layer and we just click on up or down to adjust this position and we still cannot see it because this is the info on how the layers uh, position and each frame how they should look and where's their position but the equipment itself are changeable in the runtime so to test it we should give it an equipment here for testing so for the left hand we have hands in the accessory section if you remember we just add them in a video and we can add the left hand for the left hand slot and here the artist has misplaced the position of the left hand actually and it is one frame off and this is the best way to give you a demonstration on each frame the form data for the layer data is performed we can change its position so we can change it to minus one and each frame we need to decrease it by one or or I just finished this feature to copy the data of this frame and put it on all the right or all the left of the pointer or to all the frames no matter what so here we just adjust it to minus one you can see the hand we can adjust it on each frame to make it look better for the animation and we can change as well the uh, the, the the shape depends on the shapes that you just um, coded in the equipment section so um, you can adjust the animation slowly to make it look really good as well you can actually make the uh, the hand larger like if I can make it 200 it will look ugly but that's what happened or you can make it wider and you can change the angle of why the main thing changed the angle with it we should only change the angle of the for the frame did it change the angle of everything after it ah another back discovered congratulations you will never finish with these plugs can i finish this demonstration on peace please anyhow uh if i click on any of these uh, layers i will lose the progress i must click save if i don't click save it doesn't save the progress so um let's return it normally 
as normal as it could save and the right hand let's give it the right hand and here you go and we can change the forms as well if we want just to demonstrate uh, this editor so it can change the form with the animation we can change the form of the the last frames as well the last frames I'm talking about like forsaken frames or something and save and the weapon we don't have an accessory for it, but we have the weapon act as an accessory and as you can see the weapon uh, position is too high so we can adjust it let's say 10 and 20 and again let's boss it to all the frames 10 and 20s and save now if you put uh, testing equipment for all the layers you can show the main layer the main layer will print all the layers together to see the animation how it does work unfortunately the transition is a little bit wacky because now you see the weapon is a little bit too high I might try to make a checkbox or something to keep the other layers to, for testing while changing one of them actually that will be a great feature so the weapon as you can see is a little bit too high so we can lower it save and return to main to make it look better yeah definitely I need to make uh, a checkbox to add this feature so you can see all the layers while you're adjusting one of them in the frames that will be much better after all this is the whole main purpose of repeating and remaking the whole tool to add as much features to make making game easier and this is the administration of the layered animation oh yeah I did I show you the angle you can change the angle as well so the weapon on each frame you can change the angle a little bit it doesn't accept negative now but we can make it accept negative later so you can make it uh, higher wider or whatever you can make it dance while he's walking to adjust its position and make it look better like this one will need to be a little bit back and each frame you can adjust it as much as you want to make the animation work and there you go only three sections left and I believe it's a good time to talk about control how does it work making an engine that can create any generic 2d character functional isn't that easy and I learned that in the hard way before I deleted this game file creation page from Map Simulator 3 I was working on remaking the action condition system my bride and shame Ugh, this sucker I can write full opera songs on this system but I will save you from that for now the old action condition system uses a mix of data scripts and hard code to determine how a character can work I wasn't happy with this system from day one but I kept pushing it to make it work Seven months ago, I successfully completely wiped that system out and replaced it with script only. And I don't use hard code anymore. Unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate it live to you because huge chunks of the engine and the editor need to be calibrated to the new game file and to the new foundation. But you can see my... <laughs> You can see old footage of me reworking the system, running both the old and the new maps of a later back there. But enough of all of that. Let's see how control works. All right, so first we need to handle the input. How to do that 
First we need to select one of the profiles for the controller that we just add in the main groups. And then we need to add the entities we need, like the creatures, like let's add worker, or the menus, like let's add the main menu. Here, each entity of those can handle requests and the key binding for these requests. Requests are what the user is trying to do. Like for example, walk right, walk left. Up, down, and these lists are universal. Um, here we need to be uh, to be careful because, for example, in the menu, you can use up and down, and you maybe you can use left and right, or you can use uh, different requests for them. But if you change the button for the select and you're using the the same request for uh, the the player active um the, the the action button for example opening doors and if you change if you use both of them to do select and the player changing control for the select it will change the other one so it's better to change the the player configuration and separate it from the menu so based on how your game work you can define whatever uh, requests you have. So here in Walker, for example, if you want him to walk right, here we can assign him different control, either keyboard, joystick buttons, or the sticks for the joystick. Unfortunately, you can notice there is no mouse control because the mouse, uh, uh, the mouse handling is all hard coded in the controller manager and heavily connected to the map and the control manager so if your game heavily use it's used mouse heavily unfortunately you need to hard code it in the game project maybe in game engine 7 i can find a way to separate the uh, the control manager the the data driven part from the hard code part but anyway to let the character move right, we could assign the key, uh, right? And here you can decide which uh, event is handled when the keyboard key is just pressed or when it's continuously pressed or when it's pressed up. So let's add one. We can add other keys for that. For example, walk right could be D. And because we just clicked on here, it will copy all the, the states. Or we can make it even to use the, 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 the gamepad. So all of these do the same request, walk right. And you can do that for all of them, for walk left, you do left, and so on and so forth. In the sticks, you can as well use for example the left stick for the game and we say it's greater or equal than 0 0.3 so if you move the stick third from the center greater yeah greater for right and less for left all of these data is memorized in the profile when you select another profile you need to create them again so each profile has its own map keys and that way the player have the ability to choose and create new control profiles and remap the control. And as you can see here later on, I haven't worked on this yet. I can select which one of these is can be shown in the automated generated GUI for remapping the control. I haven't made one yet because I don't have any functional game worked yet. Um, but this is only a request in the menus when you request them to move up and down you can code the request in here we didn't um, add any keys did we so we go to the menu and we say up up and up and select 
select I don't need to select it here silly me let's make it enter and in the action rule we can select the menu and it doesn't show why it doesn't show stupid conditions on the dump. <coughs> wait 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 yes here after the user has pressed his um, input and the control manager detect the input exists and detect the, the controlled entity have this input it finally will send a request for this action here we can in this page action approval we can program these for example when the request walk right is requested we can immediately change the side of the character and in this game we program that side 0 is the right and side 1 is the left for this animation for the walk animation so sit side 0 and because the side is the normal uh, animation flag not reversed there is a flag I have for uh, telling the animation what I wanted to do with it. Is it play once? Is it interruptible? Is it uh, reflect? It's a flag. So set animation flag. It's zero. I forgot to be honest. Uh, there is a way to add to the flag value and there's a subtract and there's setting because the, this uh, value represent more than one boolean. I, I don't remember how to so how did I script the thing to make this? I haven't worked on this for more than seven months, so excuse me if I screwed up in here because I can't show you a live demonstration. But anyway, then it can check if the wall, check wall, and it check the value of x plus four or three or two or whatever. And if check if there is a wall in the map, If there is not, then approve the walk right condition. If we are dealing with the animation, sorry, if we are dealing with many component, it we can immediately just fire this. We don't need to approve it. Uh, we do whatever to uh, do with the menu, but in the creatures a little bit more complicated We can do things immediately like here setting the side and setting the animation Oh, sorry approve walk or move But in the creature, we have something called action system or the active actions. Each creature can has its own actions and depends on a combination of these actions. He gets a list of them that can do stuff. So the best way to demonstrate what the hell I'm talking about, to illustrate, to elaborate, I should make some of them. So, for example, uh, move is one. Oh, let me delete it because on ground is one. On air is one. Uh, let's change this one into, yeah, small move. Um, move. Uh, melee attack one. You can, for example, if you want only one melee attack for all the melee attacks, you don't want a con consecutive attacks, or maybe the action do the attack, there, but there's no different buttons like uh, AAA or AAY. So it depends on uh, the, the keys, you can differentiate the, the different states for them. Uh, range attacks, for example, you can make the weapons have primary and secondary attacks. So we can make our attack one and our attack two. 
and so on so forth getting hit is an action even though it can be not an action unless if there's something heavily happened like uh, heavy damage to stun you here we um, identify what kind of states the creature can be in uh, stun which can be used for death as well or we can even um, add a state as dead even though dead has some kind of um, hard-coded stuff that dealing with the character when they die but yeah you we can put it here as dead and uh, here depends on the character combination of actions for example when he's only on the ground we can make him idle but when he is on the ground and he's moving then he is moving or walking or running or whatever when he is on the air and he's doing nothing then it's fall when he is on the air and we can put here down as an action and he is down he is drop when he is on the air and he is moving then he is floating when he is moving on the ground and moving and attacking as a ranged weapon we can make it um, moving attack or our attack so you can imagine whatever your character can do depends on the game style you can go forever in here uh, I had more than um, 16 state for the symbol character that I made which wasn't even half complete for the Walker game so as I said depends on the character and what he's doing now we get a set of actions the engine in the main loop it check all the creatures and it always check the action set as a hash set and if it exists it will fire this code so in here when he's idle I can program it to uh, fire a certain animation depends on the state if he is hurt then it will play a hurt animation when he is idle for the first time and he's doing nothing there's an animation if he's idle and it's, uh, it's um, uh, increment an attribute to determine if you're idle too long he can play a sound cue and um, play a different animation or smoke a cigar or whatever so in here you can program the whole thing and you can make the conditions as well before in the old engine I didn't have the script or the script because I couldn't support actions uh, sorry I couldn't support conditions in my script system so that's why I use hard-coded part to um, to set all of these wacky conditions and check and then it approve it took me a while before I could do this I really wish if I could demonstrate it but hopefully in my next update video I can demonstrate this part let's talk about skills six years ago before I started this project I first made a few designs in a book to determine if making a general 2d game engine is even possible and if it is what do I need to do after I was done with the designs I needed an ultimate test for testing all these systems on paper for that I challenged myself to theoretically design different games on paper so I came up with each page I made 
remade um, some of the games like Super Mario Brothers, Diablo 1, Final Fantasy 7 and its material system, an open world game, 2D open world like Morrowind but imagine if it was 2D, how do you level up the skills and the tributes and everything, and a D and D simulator like Neverwinter Night, a game 2D, and how it has um, races, uh, multiple classes, prestige classes, and all the fiasco of D&D games. The skill system I came up with to support all these games were so abstract and never been tested for heavy lifting yet. But on paper it works fine. It could generate all these games. But I cannot update the system till I start really using it in an actual game and see where do I need to change. Alright, so let's start looking at my abstract skill system for so far. Uh, we can have here for starter skills, we can create few skills. We can select the categories, as I said it's totally abstract. Um, later on I might actually add a way to add these types in the main game if I find it not enough. Or try to go through it and try to refine it, but uh, for now let's just make a few some of them like um fire bolt and let's say it's max level is 10 even though this number is not that matters just a suggestion the skill tree is the real one that decide and the job plan and the prototype we will see in details later the call time if i'm not mistaken is calculated by tick but i might change it to milli uh, millisecond but i'm not sure and each tick in monogame I found it is 16 but I'm not sure if it's fixed by the CB or not and then it's research dot far in it but let's say whatever 600 and the number of times is used for powers or skills that require powers up as I said this might get completely deleted later on or maybe it reset every day it depends on the game and uh, we can add descriptions dialogue or the name key and that's it so i will speed up after adding a few of them and after i'm done we will return and talk more and there you go we have a list of skills Fireball, 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 Ice Shard, Ice Ball, Blizzard, Heal, Cure, Slash, Slash Fire, whatever. And um, before I had a formula system where you write how the variables change the power of the skill. But because it was a specific system that only worked for skills and nothing else, Part of the refactoring I made, I deleted all the specific only used system to make the script more generalized and work everywhere and I got rid of it. I will need to reprogram something similar and hopefully much more useful, much more open to the skills and make scripts replace it completely. So what's next? Next we have skill trees. The skill trees hold a collection of skills which we can apply conditions on them in two forms, either in the skill form or the attribute form. Attributes um, doesn't have to be a game player related attributes for the entities. Entities can have attributes like uh, health points, mana points, skill points, strength, yes, but it can have different things for inner mechanics, for example, um, jump height, number of jumps, or um, I don't know, when you fall, how much you can jump after you fall, these values that 
variables. I can use them even as a string variables. Each attribute have a string variables that I can change as well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a filter in here to differentiate between the two. All of them will show in here, but oh well. Uh, maybe later on I can put attributes in categories or smart ways. Actually, I should make a search system in here. You see the search everywhere. I didn't put search in here, but let's focus. How about to make few of these skill trees and then continue showing you the system. Let me speed up. All right, so we have few skill trees. Let me fill them with skills to add the first skill, for example. We need to pick the skill type and then we can select one of these skills and then how much the max for the skill. And uh, we can add another skill. We didn't add any passive, so we don't have it. Whoops, not in here, in here. And in, let me delete this one. And in these skills, we can add conditions to them. For, the, for example, fireball, we can say it required fireball level five. And it required the mana at least 50. And let's add intelligence. So we can add the trivius in here. Let's add wisdom, intelligence, vitality, and whatsoever. So here we can require for the fireball, fireball, no fireball, to have at least ten intelligence and save. So here, when you select Fireball, it doesn't have requirements. But when you select Fireball, you'll see it have different requirements. 15 mana, 10 intelligence, Fireball. So let's speed up a little bit and add some of these skills. All right, so let's take a quick look on what have I made. It's just a crabby work. I just want to demonstrate the whole thing. So wizard is just an upgrade class for mage, which have same skills. And we can even have some of the skills higher. We increase the maximum of skills he can learn. And uh, for a mage, he cannot learn firewall, but for a wizard, he can learn firewall. This is a very simple demonstration. Same for Accolade and Priest. And uh, didn't put a lot of uh, conditions. And Warrior, I only made a slash for him, but Elemental Warrior. He can only learn slash, fire slash, and ice slash. I made them called slash fire, so I can search. Because if I search, it will show me all the results that start with a slash. If I do that, it will just show the same result. But if I say slash F, it will show slash fire. So if you have more skills, it will show all the slashes. Later on, I will uh, <coughs> program the right click to make search that show all the contain keywords to the elements. It will be a quick fix, but it will take like an hour to change all the searches. But anyway, here, <coughs> the Elemental Warrior, he can learn Fire Slash only if he learns Slash and Fire Bolt. But he cannot learn Fire Bolt. Here, where the job plan works. The skill trees only show you what the skill tree itself is contained and how the conditions works. Jobs. What can I say about jobs? Jobs you can say is blueprint. It show or hold 
or define all the potential that the entity can have. It doesn't mean it can have it all, but whatever it can have, it decided in the job. Depends on the game again, you, you can use the job system in a different way. You could use it for defining um, a special uh, class, like, uh, I don't know, warriors, or have you ever played JRPGs? Each JRPG have different way to define what a character can have. It can be a character name, like Walker class, the enemy class, um, David class, or it can be a racial. It's a human. Let, let, let's do that. Human. Elf. X. Yeah, X. Uh, dwarf. A half. Orc. And the rest of the gang. Each job plan can have different skill trees. For example, humans can only be mage and warriors. But again, depends on the game and how you want to limit it. And each job plan can define what kind of minimum and maximum attribute it can have. Once again, this is not the real thing when you have many objects in the game this only tell you humans how much they can be the maximum what kind of skills for the object itself we can define a set of attributes and skills and even scripts to what they can have and save it as timberlates Whenever you go to the map editor, you can select these timberlates to represent these characters. So, for example, we can select a creature and say Soldier 1. And here, these timberlates, the prototype, are the actual data that each entity has. It doesn't have the conditions, it doesn't have the requirements, it only have the job names. Yes, each entity can have more than one job. And if you want to limit your game, as I said, it depends how you limit it, you can make each entity can have only one job. Or you can make it as complex as um, d and And the jobs become the, um, the class type. And the rage will become an attribute. See how things work? And in this case, we can make soldiers can learn to be mages and um, warriors and uh, unlock the elemental warrior. And then with that, you can add the skills up and unlock these skills. And that's it. As I said, this system is extremely abstract. It haven't been tested yet, except on paper, and it worked fine. You have uh, job plans that add a combination of skill trees. Skill trees have a combination of skills and have uh, the conditions on them on the scripts. And the prototype, which you can have save timberlates in here in the game file, and when you go to the map editor and you add the new entities, you can give them these um, timberlates to add the creatures quickly. But in the map editor, you have the ability to edit these tributes and do whatever you want. Even though the skill tree and the job says, uh, the skill tree say the maximum level of firebolt is 50, here you can put however you want. You can put it. 300, it doesn't matter. Oh, actually, maximum is 255. Anyhow. Can you feel it? Yes! Only one section left! Items! Anything that creatures can take from map or containers and use our items. 
Yes, objects can be interact with on the maps, but you cannot take them. And instead, objects, weapons, and bags can act as an item. But the map deal with them as an item when they are on the map and containers. If you want to deal with them as an items. Actually, these classes contain the item class and their objects contain an object class for the item inside them it's con it's just a containing so whenever you interact with them as an items it goes and bulk these data these classes and instead of bulking the class itself so i decided actually one of the changes i made for the refaction for differentiate the um, foundation is I made all items without exception use the item sprites even if it is a weapon it doesn't use the weapon sprite it used the item sprites and uh, just to cut the clutter when the, the sprite patch to, uh, bring these in the list it used only one image just for the optimization sake so whenever you have the item on the map you define it here, even if it is a weapon. When the weapon you define it, that's a different story. You can use that definition for other GUI purposes, like the equipment page maybe or something. Anyway, uh, so let's create some. Uh, we can talk about bags as well. Bags can be uh, shaped, that's mean um, the bag itself contain equipment that you can see them as and images and live in a grid. Uh, bags that contain items list without shape is similar to Final Fantasy bags where you see the items as a text. So here we can define items as I continually say and we can use the numbers and we can define for example money. And again this is a blueprint this is not the actual entity in the map you can add these entities as the real object of items the item class whenever the player interact with these entities it can come and check these data including the item group the weight and how much they can stack in a bag if they live in a bag and how much you can buy and sell it actually these five attributes I never used them in actual games, so they are just like mm, there, exist there. And item types could be used for quest or filtering uh, purposes. Again, I used it only once in an old code to make a bags as a type of bags, all the bags, and use it in a filter to make the bags possibly not be able to put bag inside another bag. So let's define another item let's say gun and here when you say weapon you can have the same entity weapon class have more than one item based on this entity for example you have um for different purposes you have the same weapon shape and it behave the same but for some reason, some weight differently, some uh, have different size, different shapes in the bags. Whatever the reason, you can create different names for the weapons and they can behave differently. So, um, as an item again. Uh, let's say gun one, but that's the same name of the object gun one whatever just for demonstration and again we can give a description and name key dialog which i'll i'll talk about when i deal with the campaign video and this oh we didn't give it the shape in here so let me so let's give it the shape quickly so 96 90 48 48 is yeah 96 why is positions look wrong I don't know how the position look off. Um, sword. Let's make a sword. Sword. Actually, it's forty-eight. 
And the uh, sword zero. We can put it in a bag and give it a shape. For example, we tell it it has a shape of three. No, zero three. And again, we can draw it here. So this is how the sword will appear in the back. So we can adjust it again in here. So um, it's, uh, it's a little bit wider. And there you go, save. So the gun doesn't have a shape, but the sword have a shape. And uh, so on and so forth, you can uh, add armors, whatever the hell this is. items powers up as long as they exist in here you can define them as in the map how they look and in the bag how they look and the second page is for the bag we can add bags and again you can give it a look for the bag itself when it appear in the map even though this is not really going to be used because this is uh, how, how to put it this is the back class. When it appears in a map, you need to create an item for this bag in here. So yeah, here you can define a look on the map and in the back again. So this image, actually the one that you put in here, is not for the appearance on the map, but you can use it for the GUI, for example. You can put different purposes for this image in the game. And we can define if it is slotted or not. That means does it have a grid or not? And if it has a grid, how large is it? Row and um, columns. And if does it have a max weight and max item? One of the bad design things I made is I made the blueprint itself hold the maximum weight and maximum item, not the entity. Then I thought about it, well, and even the size. So when you add items in here and you want the bag's items in the map have different sides, you must define a new bag class. I couldn't find a better way to do it with the filters and everything. Uh, maybe I can define a script to change the values of these four but keep the filtering and the scripts for the bag intact and the image and everything. That's the best solution I found but eh, yeah, yeah, it's not a perfect system but uh, so far I like how the filters happen and how they shape and actually I forgot to tell you yeah, as well you can decide which uh, which uh, slot is solid or not by right and left click on the image so um, we can add an item and call it core and we can use our great script system script a grid system And uh, we say it is this position. And then we remove the grid. And add the core. And the core, we give it a size of, uh, I don't know, 8 by 8. And it's this thing. I don't remember the core. It's actually less than 8, it's uh, 5. And uh, we uh, shift it a little bit. Actually, I believe it can fit in seven. And then we can tell the game that this item is solid in this position. I didn't fit it perfectly like uh, when I tested this thing. 
and save so now when I select it it remember so if you have an item that's uh, one by two you can put it in the middle in the back or one by three you can put it in the side or one by one so you can play the micro management for the game is this solid or not oh that wasn't solid so we can edit that and this is uh, the end of demonstration of um, the game file the new game file and how they look well 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 so what left i was in the middle of making william ordeals alpha 2 and i was actually planning to upgrade my engine and refactor everything after i'm done with that but when i discovered that it will be really hard to make quests and player choices done without proper support for conditions in the game and after several events in life happened, I decided to ditch William Ordeal and just start upgrading the engine. Did it worth it? Well, I already made lines of code comparisons for the foundation on Twitter. Let's do the same for the game file creation system. Here we have all the new sections on the right, except for the attack and fire. Taking the average number of lines except for the group page, I estimate that the attack will be 350 lines. Let's make it 400. If we consider the fire be 400 lines in total, the total number of lines will be 4259. Let's compare it to the old system. This one. And it is any guesses? Can you guess how many? 6,820 lines. Yes, the difference is not something to cover. 2,561 lines. Not only that, the system is cleaner and uh, have a lot of features. People ask me, am I done? When will you release your first game? When you will release your game engine? Even though at the start of 2019, I said I finished developing the game engine. And I wasn't trying to lie, I finished the foundation of all main system I need to create game. Countless number of hours has been spent on doing every little thing. Networking and porting aren't working, yeah, but I kinda don't care about them for now. Cause I need to make sure that my game engine is solid before I get my game out for multiple consoles or add a new layer of complications like a network support. So to make it short, I'm doing my best to make creating a game on my game engine smoother and safer. I don't want to spend all your time in here explaining everything. What have you seen in here is the new system for creating the game file. Believe me when I say this doesn't make even 8% of the whole work of my project. If we count the deleted and remade tools, it will even take less than that. There are a lot of systems out there taking care of a lot of things and explaining them all, even mentioning their names alone, will take a long time. So I rather make um, one long video to show each system in real action. So back to the question, when I'm going to finish the game. This video alone took me 10 days to make. I planned to do it in one day, then I thought I need to make it look pretty, so maybe it will take 3 days. Then it became 10. Oh well. Hope it was, <laughs> hope it was watchable at least, but at least I solved most of the website issues in 2 days which I was planning to do in two weeks. What I do need to do next is remake part of the map editing. Let the map do the R classes and layers on the map layers, then implement all of that in the game engine using the texture class instead of the bitmap. Rewire the campaign functions a bit, test the game engine for taking the new files format, 
creating attack and fire function and go back to the implemented the, the GUI to make the data in the game file creation page and then, and then create a conversation system in the game engine that because uh, what I did in William Ordea was creating the, the conversation system in the game project I need one in the engine that other game projects can utilize to create their own conversation systems. I don't think three months is enough for all of this, even if I don't take any breaks in the middle. So I'm afraid William Ordeal first part won't come at the end of this year, even if I stick to this plan. Maybe in 2022, May, the third month. I might consider remaking Castle 2 instead and watch it and launch the game for free to get more publicity and test the game mechanic as well. Oh well. If you watch all of this, many thanks for watching and I'm sorry. I hope you liked what I did so far and I appreciated any kind of support. By doing likes, comments, sharing this video with others or even donating by using PayPal link so I can buy myself more coffee so I can work more. I hope to see you next time. Let this moment be recorded in history. I finally finished this task.